Welcome back to Virtualize Everything. Today, we're going to be setting up Home Assistant. Now, I'm probably going to do a second video on this, but this is the official way of setting up Home Assistant. So, let's jump with it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a VM. So, with that, we're going to click Create VM, and we'll just let it be called 110. We'll give it a name, call it Home Assistant, next, OS, don't use media, next, uh, machine's going to be set to Q35, and BIOS is going to be set to UEFI, and we want to make sure we uncheck pre-enroll keys. If you don't, when you move the QCOW2 file over, you're going to have some problems. And we're going to select our location for EFI disk. Next, we can just leave this alone. We can actually just remove it. CPU, we're going to go to minimum requirements and give it two cores and two gigs of RAM. Network, bridge is going to be okay. And we're going to hit finish. So this makes a new VM. We can't just start this VM. We actually have to jump over to the console and do some work over there. So to get to the console, you're going to click on your server. Mine's called R710. If you have a default Proxmox install, it's probably going to be called PVE. And then you're going to click Shell. And that's going to bring up a window that looks something like this. So in order to get Home Assistant, we're going to have to enter some commands here. Don't fear, they're pretty easy. And I'm going to show you how to get most of them to actually use them. So let's open a web browser to do this. And we're going to go to the homeassistant.io page. And you can see I'm here at slash installation slash alternative. This screen shows me three different VM options. The VM option we're going to use today is the KVM slash Proxmox 2. We're going to right click on that and then we're going to go down to copy link. Now that's going to give us the link address in our clipboard. So then we can go back to our shell and we can enter the first command which is w get. We will paste in the information that we added to our clipboard and press enter. This will download the actual disk image that we're going to use to set up Home Assistant VM in our Proxmox server. Now we can run ls and view that downloaded file. You can see here I have a couple times that I've downloaded it. I've been playing around before. As you can see, when we look at my Proxmox sidebar here and discovered the easiest way to actually set up Home Assistant on your Proxmox server using your web interface. So we're going to head back to our shell terminal and now we need to unpack the file that we downloaded. So to do that, we're going to go ahead, highlight the file that we downloaded and copy it. Then we're going to do unxz because this file is compressed in the xz format. Then we're going to place a space and copy that name in. Press enter and I get an error message saying that it already exists. It happens to be right here, but it's going to just hang for a few minutes and not really show you anything. That's all right. It'll finish in a few minutes and you'll have the file ready to use. Now we need to import this file into the actual VM. So to do that, we go back to the web interface for a brief second and we identify the number of the VM. In my case, it's 110, but the number's right here. Then we go back to the console terminal and we're going to enter the command qm import disk the vm id number 110 in my case then we're going to enter the name of the disk image 
for Home Assistant. I'm copying and pasting this. And then we're going to enter the location we want to install this. So let's go back to the Proxmox web interface and look. You can see that I have a couple of disks down here and I'm going to use the local LVM. You want to note that a lot of times your disks store certain things. So like you can see local here stores ISOs, container templates, and backups. Now if we go to the local LVM, you can see that it stores VM disks and container volumes. So that's the right location. If you've added an extra drive to your system and configured it to store VM disks, then you can store it on that drive if you so choose. Back to our command line, we're going to enter local-lvm and press enter. Now it's perfectly normal to hang there for a few minutes. So now we've successfully imported the disk so we can go back to our web interface. At our web interface, you can see that an unused disk zero has appeared right here. Let's go ahead, click edit, and if we want to change the bus device, we can, but there's no need to. So all we need to do at this point is hit add, and the disk gets added in as a hard disk. Now we can go ahead and remove this CD-ROM because we don't need it. If you choose to use it, I think you can leave it in, but I've always removed it. We can start the VM and press console to view what is happening. As you can see, we've gotten a boot error. So let's go ahead, close this screen, go back to the web interface, stop the machine. Now that it's stopped, we're gonna go to options and boot order. And you can notice that it says just net zero. Hit edit uncheck net zero, check SCSI zero, press OK, now start, and we can open that console again. And we should have the actual Home Assistant version booting. All right, so Home Assistant should be loaded and working. And there you go, Home Assistant is now preparing. And this says it could take a few minutes. You'll have to go through at this point and configure Home Assistant with a new admin user and follow the steps. That wasn't the point of this video. It was to get you set up and to get your Home Assistant VM running. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation, found it useful, and are able to get up and running with Home Assistant very quickly now. It can be somewhat daunting to follow some of the directions with Home Assistant as they have you in command line quite frequently. And they're mostly meant for older versions. As always, have a good night. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing.